What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be talking about 5 perks in Modern Warfare 3 that are either broken, or that I feel could use some tuning, in order to improve perk and playstyle variety overall. And with this, I should point out, I am going to be doing other perk breakdown videos, and I may have some other recommendations for some of the other perks in the game, to maybe tweak and fine tune them a little bit to get them in a better place. But in today's video, I wanted to focus on the main perks, the ones that I feel need the most work. And the first two are going to be very easy because these are actually just straight up broken at this point. It is worth noting with both of these, Sledgehammer has already acknowledged that there is an issue here and they will be fixing them maybe even as early as this week. But I'm going to mention them here anyway. The first one is the hijacked IFF strobe, basically cold blooded. This just currently doesn't work at all. If you put it on your class setup and you try to spawn in with that class setup, you will end up spawning with a totally different class that doesn't even have that perk equipped. Sledgehammer has acknowledged this one and we should be seeing a fix for this, hopefully in the near future. And then the other big one here that's just straight up broken at the moment is EOD. And actually did a bit more testing with EOD. It turns out we are getting the flat percentage reduction with EOD to explosive damage. However, it's missing one element in public matches, and this is the damage clamp that prevents one single explosive from killing you when you're at full health. So it's technically still helping, however, with certain explosives, like frag grenades for instance, the sheer amount of damage that's being dealt when you're really close to a frag grenade, the flat percentage reduction isn't enough to cut that down below the 150 HP threshold. And this is why we typically see a damage clamp, so even if you have a really powerful explosive like that from a piece of equipment, the EOD style perk should still be countering that by making sure that it can't deal any more than X amount of damage. And typically that clamp is around 80% of your total health pool, so at 150 HP, that would mean a single piece of explosive equipment could only deal a maximum of 120 damage no matter what. And that's clearly not the case right now. I'm sure many of you guys have used EOD and died to a single frag grenade, for instance, without taking any other damage from other sources. So it doesn't appear to be working as intended. And when you test this in custom games, the damage clamp is actually working properly. You won't die to a single frag grenade as long as it's an enemy that throws it. If you try to throw your own frag grenade at your feet, you don't get the benefits of EOD for that. And that's always been the case in Call of Duty. But that damage clamp does work in custom games, it's just not working in public matches at this point. Again, this is something that Sledgehammer has confirmed is broken at the moment, and we should be seeing a fix for this one as well, which is excellent news. So those are the two easy ones on my list because they are just straight up broken, and both of those have been acknowledged. Now we're going to move into some other perks that aren't technically broken, but I feel they aren't balanced properly at the moment, and in some cases it feels like they're doing literally nothing to help you. And I'm going to start this off with the Quick Grip Gloves. Now the Gloves category is a pretty weak category of perks in this game, and therefore I wouldn't expect all the gloves to be extremely powerful, but something I've seen some complaints about is these gloves don't actually seem to be helping with your weapon swap speed, which is what they're designed to do. So I first tested this with an SMG, the WSP Swarm, switching to the Core 45 pistol. These are guns that have quite fast raise and lower times by default. And it turns out in this case, the quick grip gloves do nothing to help you with your swap speed. So you're literally wasting a perk if you're using this particular combination. So that's obviously a bit unfortunate in this case. That perk does nothing to help you. However, of course, like I said, that has a fast default swap speed in that particular case. So what if we use an LMG swapping to the Core 45? We've got the pull me out here. And in this case, these gloves allow us to swap our weapon literally 2% faster. We're talking like one frame at 60 FPS or two frames at 120 FPS, which is a totally negligible improvement. So this perk really doesn't seem to be doing what it's meant to be doing. Unless we take it to a bit more of an extreme where we're swapping from a primary weapon to another primary weapon. And in this case, when swapping from the Pilmiat to the Striker SMG, now we're suddenly seeing about a 34% improvement in our swap time. And then additionally, I wanted to try this with a setup that you may want to run. This is with the CAT AMR sniper rifle combined with the Renetti with that conversion kit attached to it that turns it basically into an SMG. And again, in this case, we saw a 35% improvement with the quick grip gloves. So these gloves do have some utility and they do work for you, but only if you're using the right combination of weapons. And while of course, once you figure this out and once you know this, you can adapt to this and make sure that you're only using those gloves in certain scenarios on certain setups. In my opinion, if you have a perk that's telling you that it's doing something, it should do that thing all the time unless otherwise stated. And since there isn't any note here that mentions that this perk does nothing for you if you're using a certain combination of weapons, then I think it should be giving you a flat percentage reduction to your weapon swap time regardless of the situation. 
So that's the quick grip gloves. Now let's move on to the ghost perk. This is something I've seen tons of comments about. People saying that the ghost perk just doesn't seem to be working at all. And I think it's because a lot of people coming from Modern Warfare 2 don't realize that ghost requires movement. And not only that, it's quite unforgiving with this movement. Now, I did point this out in the beta and nothing seems to have changed since the beta, but I'm gonna be bringing it up again here since many people missed that in the beta. But with the ghost perk in this game, in order to activate it, you have to be moving at least 0.9 meters per second. And you can see whether or not Ghost is active at any given moment based on the arrow on the minimap. If it fades away a little bit, that means the Ghost perk is currently active and UAV sweeps won't pick you up. Whereas when it goes a little more solid, that's when the Ghost perk is deactivated. And this 0.9 meters per second threshold is actually quite low. With a lot of LMGs, depending on the setup you're using, you can actually crouch walk at 0.9 meters per second. And therefore you can keep Ghost active while crouch walking with an LMG. However, the problem with the Ghost Perk in Modern Warfare 3 is the moment your character model drops below that movement threshold, it immediately deactivates. There's no forgiveness with this. You don't have time to stop on a piece of cover for a second just to check your surroundings without disabling the Ghost Perk. You don't have time to grab a reload. You don't even have time for a really quick gunfight before your Ghost Perk disables. And I think this is what's causing a lot of confusion with people where they're wondering, how did that guy know I was coming? I'm using covert sneakers and the ghost perk, and yet he clearly must have seen me on the radar. Well, in many cases, I think it's people that don't understand that you have to be moving. They maybe just didn't read the description and expect the ghost perk to work the way it did in the previous game. Or for other cases, it might be people that understand you have to be moving, but they don't understand how unforgiving this is and how even stopping for half a second is enough to reveal you on the enemy's minimap if a UAV sweep happens to come in during that time. Now thankfully, in the AMA that Sledgehammer did a few days back, they actually mentioned that they're looking into reports that the detection for moving to standing still is too aggressive with the Ghost Perk currently, and as a result, I suspect we will be seeing an adjustment to the Ghost Perk here. For me, I definitely prefer this style of Ghost Perk that does require movement, but I do agree it's a little unforgiving in its current state, and I think it should take like two to three seconds before that Ghost Perk deactivates, but then if they were to do that, I think they would also have to make it a little bit more difficult to activate to begin with, otherwise people could really easily abuse that by essentially still just sitting in a corner and barely moving around just enough to activate it, knowing that they've got a few seconds before it'll deactivate by itself. And then finally, for the important perks that I feel could use a little bit of an adjustment to improve perk variety, this is the Stalker Boots. And the reason I'm focusing on the Stalker Boots is I feel this is the primary boot that could compete with the Covert Sneakers in this game and could provide a little bit more variety in that tier if they were very noticeably better than they currently are. As of right now, these Stalker Boots only work when you're strafing sideways while aiming down sights. They don't actually work for your general aim walking speed, so if you're moving forward and aim walking, Stalker Boots do literally nothing to help you. They only help with the side-to-side -side strafing. And to top that off, we only get a 17.5% boost to our strafe speed while using these boots. And to be honest, that's not even remotely close to being enough to properly compete with the Covert Sneakers and to make them a viable alternative to the Covert Sneakers. I mean, looking back to the original Modern Warfare 3, the Stalker perk in that game, if I remember correctly, that would actually boost your aim walking movement speed to the value of your base movement speed when you weren't aiming down sight. So that's in a completely different league compared to the Stalker boots in this game. And I'm not saying we necessarily need to go that far with it, although I wouldn't mind that. I'm just trying to use that to illustrate the fact that a 17.5% boost isn't even remotely close enough to compete with the Covert Sneakers. And instead, even looking at like a 25% boost, I still don't think this would be quite enough, but at least it would be a little bit more than it currently is. This is what that would look like. And that's looking at least a little bit more viable, although I still feel like I'd probably lean toward the covert sneakers here. And just for a more extreme example, this is what a 45% increase to our aim down sight stray speed looks like. And this is starting to approach what the stalker perk looked like in the original Modern Warfare 3. So I'm not saying they necessarily need to even boost it this much, but 17.5% isn't even close to enough if you want some perk variety in that second tier. And I honestly think the Stalker Boots would be a good option at somewhere around a 30% boost to our aim down sight stray speed. And then on top of that, I think it should also apply to your aim walking movement speed in any direction because the description states that it does, and yet it doesn't in its current state. If that were the case, at least in respawn game modes, I could actually see myself using Stalker Boots, at least on some of my setups. I'd still be using Covert Sneakers on a lot of my setups. And then of course, for non-respawn game modes like Search and Destroy, for instance, Covert Sneakers would still be an absolute crutch. But if you want to improve perk variety a little bit, especially in that second tier, I do think these Stalker Boots would need a pretty significant buff from where they're at right now. 
And with that, that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap it up for at least the primary perks that I feel could use some adjustments. And if they were to make some noticeable adjustments here, we may see a bit more perk variety and also just a bit better expectations as far as how the perks are working in game. Because at least for me and for many other people I've been seeing talk about this in the community, many of these perks just aren't meeting the expectations that we would normally have for them. And with that, this is where I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this in those comments down below. First off, what do you guys think about the general perk balance in Modern Warfare 3 so far? And second, what do you think about the feedback that I provided in this video? Do you guys agree with this feedback? Do you think some of these perks should be buffed and improved in some ways? Or do you think they're just fine as is? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.